I've seen a lot of people, it looks like, are stressed out about the NEO stock price action. Uh, I will link a video here in case there's a data point you might not even be aware of that can absolutely impact stock price, especially in the short term, especially for a company that's not yet profitable. But this video, I want to focus on some research. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. The ES6 is pictured on the screen. These are models, and it looks like they are being produced and possibly set up for early delivery. Why is this important? Well, the EC7 I mentioned came out early as well, which is a sign to me that in the last month or two, Neo has gotten over to the NT 2.0 platform, and this could set up for the big second half of the year on the delivery side for Neo. But the ES6 is a really important model. The relevance of this model is such that I caught it. Uh, he normally doesn't talk like this, but William Lee in the last earnings call said the ES6 is the most important model for Neo. And that really caught my attention. But he also said within that same earnings call that for Neo to get to 30,000 monthly deliveries, what his sort of thought is there are three models that can make up about 20,000 of the deliveries. The three models are the ET5, which is currently being delivered. The ES6, which now, if it's being delivered early, is starting to be delivered. And the ET5 Touring, which we'll see a little bit later. So with that in mind, if that's supposed to make up two-thirds of the sales roughly for NEO in this second half of the year, which is upcoming and upcoming fast, that's sort of what I'm watching. And I wanted to share some of that in case people didn't catch it, didn't have you know all those dots connected. But let's keep it moving because there is a lot more to cover. Next up, and shout out to CNAV Post. They do such a great job, and I've been following them on Twitter for a couple of years. Uh, and, and I usually, I try to acknowledge them every once in a while and link their articles in the description because they're just, they do a great job. I really appreciate their work. Uh, Neo offers interior upgrades for the 2022 ET7. And there are, looks like 15 upgrades that they've done, but hold on, I want to go over here and show you the playlist that I have for my channel that I created. And this is tracking the sedans and how NEO has done with the rankings in China. And I talk about the pure electric vehicle play and also the overall play. And so if you look back to July and June, which was when the ET7 came out and was new, they were placing, they were ranking in the top 10. I'll be curious if we can see this model get up to the thousand plus number in the future, but I didn't expect it until we would get sort of this upgrade uh, to the original model. There were some things that some people were talking about. They wanted different. And, and, and so I'm just curious, I'm sitting back watching, monitoring this again. This is not one of the three models that is supposed to comprise the 20,000, uh, monthly delivery potential for Neo, but it is, I think it actually, it's my favorite model that Neo has. It's the one I'd probably choose if I had uh, a choice. Not that I would turn down any Neo if it was me, uh, but let's keep it moving because we've now got to talk about why Neo is much more than just a car company. And as a global brand and the size and the scope for this brand, this is one of the reasons that I look at them as a long-term play. And I also think they have a much bigger potential value globally than what a lot of folks are thinking, recognizing, talking about. And it's also one of the reasons I'm not terribly concerned about the stock price action right now, especially as the company is not yet profitable. They're doing incredible investment globally. This is the kind of thing they're doing. Neo is already named in policy in China as providing the grid and, and part of the grid with the battery swap or power swap stations. Now they are starting to do more expansion into Europe and they have this partnership with Shell, kind of a big deal. And so let's see how this goes. It's still so much earlier than a lot of people want to acknowledge. And, and some folks get stuck and hung up on only the delivery numbers month to month. There's just a lot more this company's doing than that, in my opinion. Let's keep it moving now because this is another thing Neo has done. Neo founder Lee Bin has decided to enter the lithium industry. And no, this is not new. This is old news. This is actually from 2022. Um, Neo, with the cost of lithium getting so high, and this is the part I want to actually show, uh, share or highlight. Neo's investment in Greenwing is divided into two parts. First, Neo will pay 7.5 million US dollars to subscribe to 21.818 million shares allotted by Greenwing. With the subscription, Neo will hold approximately 12.16 equity in Greenwing and occupy a position on the company's board of directors. This is Neo getting involved and investing so that they can actually have more control over their supply chain and Longer term, bigger picture, that's the kind of thing that makes sense 
if you're a serious player and if you're also not just hung up on the short term, but you want to really have that big global footprint. So that's a smart move in my mind. Also, Neo, and this is recent news, Neo has acquired a 19.9% stake in Neo Fusion and Neo Capital has acquired a 10.1% stake. Again, Neo is investing in the future. This is a company that is built for the future. And with the massive positioning already in place with providing part of the grid in China, this, this is exactly the kind of thing that for me makes me more bullish on the company long term. But I realize until delivery ramp happens, for example, if that's what is contingent for NEO to get to profitability until some of these other investments really pay out, then I, I'm okay with waiting and, and watching and monitoring. I still think NEO could get to profitability in 2024 as they're hoping to do. But let's see, this is, and congratulations if you stuck around to the end. This is maybe flying under the radar and will continue to do so until the end of the year. But I wanted to highlight it and mention it. China issues policy to support NEV consumption in rural areas. I mentioned this before and I referenced it as the rural model. Neo realized there was an opportunity within the rural model. And what I say with rural model, I actually did a breakdown. The, the tier one cities are the biggest cities in China. They're huge, they're massive. But the lower tier cities or smaller cities are basically 3 million people or fewer. And so that's the rural areas. But within the rural areas, Neo found that by putting some of their battery swap stations, their power swap stations in, they ended up getting a lot of users in some of these areas. And so there's actually a specific sort of niche model that they now have created. And this is why Neo decided to up their goal of just 400, <laughs> just 400 battery swap stations or power swap stations being put into place in 2023 to a thousand. They want to make sure they focus in on and take advantage of getting into, get some uh, absorption into these rural areas and make sure that they can provide the infrastructure with the battery swap, the power swap stations. So when I see this, that China is now issuing policy to support it. And I know that Neo is actually already moving in that direction and is sort of ahead. That's another really positive nod in my mind. But if you haven't figured it out by now, a lot of what I do it's kind of research based and it's tracking things. And I have a longer term lens, you know, for those who don't know, I was a real estate investor in a former life. I'm getting back into that business and I'm not looking to plug that here, but I will say this. One of the things that I learned over the course of time was when I took more time, did more digging, did more research, and then also made sure to see the direction of things. I better position myself for gains. And, and that's kind of what it's about, right? You want to minimize your risk as an investor, whatever that looks like for you. And you want to maximize your profits or your potential profits. And also it helps to have clarity with your time frame. So my thought is always, what's my time frame? How long am I willing to wait? What am I seeing? Has anything changed? Do I need to adapt or adopt my strategy to uh, reflect anything that's happened with the company that is Neo, the delivery side of things? If you only look at the, the delivery side of things, then you could be disappointed. But if you look at the overall size, scale, and scope that this company has and what they're doing, and if you didn't catch it. I didn't even talk about their sub brands that they're working on that are going to be coming out for mass market. But the positioning and the very intentional positioning by Neo as a premium brand will probably bring a lot more attention and positive attention and more demand to the mass market stuff once they roll it out. So let's see how that goes. But again, this is not just an overnight play. This is a longer term play. Can they get to profitability in 2024? I believe it starts with the delivery ramp up and the production ramp up that it looks like we might be getting a glimpse of just a teaser of, but I still think June is probably the month where we're going to look for a bigger uptick and Neo getting back closer to the delivery numbers that they had before. I think June, July are going to be really important months for that. May, it looks like is just the rollout of the ES6, which is a really important model for Neo, but it still only comprises two thirds of the three models that they want, because we still need to wait on the ET5 touring, which will be coming out later. I went on a lot longer than I intended, but there was a lot to cover and I feel like we got through a decent amount. So come back and see me again. I appreciate it. Thanks. We'll see y'all again real soon.